If you're, if you're really lucky, lucky in your, in your lab, lab, you're going to work, work with biological specimens, which are, which are any biological tissues, fluids, or, fluids or organisms. At first, At first you, might you might be grossed out, grossed out because often these are preserved animals and other organisms. But, but with biological specimens, specimens we, get we get the exciting opportunity to learn, to learn firsthand about, about anatomy, physiology, biochemical, biochemical processes, disease, health, health nutrition, nutrition, and so much, so much more. more. There are there any, any number, number of reasons you might be working, be working with biological specimens. specimens. For example, For example, if you're taking a biology, biology class, you'll likely, you'll likely do dissections of various animals, animals during your lab sessions. sessions. It's, it's important to take advantage of these opportunities because you'll learn an incredible amount about how animals look on the inside. You might, you might even be surprised to learn just how similar many animals are to us when it comes, when it comes to their anatomy. Or, or if, if you're, you're in a medical lab, lab you might be working with human or animal tissues to, to test disease treatments, effects of harmful substances, substances tissue, tissue growth, or, or something else. else. Or, or maybe, maybe you're a wildlife, wildlife biologist and you're working with bat guano, picking it apart to see which insects different species of bats prefer to eat. No matter, no matter why you're working with biological specimens, it's, it's important that you know how to handle them properly. This, this will ensure, ensure the safety of you and others working in the lab, and lab, and lab safety, safety goes hand-in-hand hand 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 with lab fun. fun. As, As you've just seen, seen biological specimens are, are instrumental for a variety of professions, of professions and they, they can, can provide us with a lot of helpful, helpful information. information. But, it's but it's important for those of us working in the lab to handle, to handle specimens properly to avoid contamination and other health hazards. Think about, Think about it. it. If, if you're cooking, cooking chicken, chicken for dinner, dinner you use a separate, separate cutting board and knife, and you, and you make sure to wash your hands thoroughly before touching the other ingredients. This is because, because the chicken in your kitchen is like a biological specimen in the lab. When handled, when handled correctly, it's just, it's just what you need. But when, but when handled improperly, you can make, make your entire family sick very quickly. Unlike, Unlike your chicken, chicken dinner, dinner, but just like anything else in the lab, definitely don't put your biological specimens in your mouth. This, this sounds, sounds like a simple, simple lab rule, but, but you'd be surprised how many times this type of action leads to totally preventable accidents. It's also, it's also important to wear protective gear while working, working with any biological specimen. Depending, Depending on what you're working with, with it may be necessary to wear eye goggles, a lab, lab coat, and an apron. But at, but at minimum, you should, should at least wear gloves to protect your hands. hands. Many, Many of the specimens, specimens that are used in biology labs, labs are preserved with formaldehyde, which is great, great for preservation, but can, but can be dangerous if you get it on your skin, in your, in your eyes, or breathe, breathe in the fumes. If you're, if you're working, working with live organisms, organisms which, which is often the case in a medical research lab, lab you, may you may need to protect yourself from bites, scratches, or other contact with your specimens. Live, live animals present an entirely different range of possible accidents than preserved animals, so your, so your handling, handling protocol may be quite expensive, and you, and you should familiarize yourself with them for your own safety as well as the safety of others. As mentioned, as mentioned before, you may, you may be working with human tissues or bodily fluids in your lab, which are, which are common, common disease vectors. vectors. If, if these, these are the types of specimens you'll be working with, you'll, you'll need to be extra careful and follow all safety precautions outlined for you. Gloves, eye protection, eye protection, and lab coats are hard, hard minimums because they will, they will protect your hands, eyes, skin, skin and, clothing and clothing from contact with possibly, with possibly dangerous or deadly samples. Once, Once you're, you're finished working with your specimens, specimens you're, done, you're done, right? Just, just pick, pick everything up and toss it in the garbage? garbage? Definitely not. As, As with anything else in the lab, disposal of a specimen depends entirely on what the specimen is. First, you'll, First, you'll need to properly clean any instruments you use during your lab work. Some, Some may, may need to be run through an autoclave, a pressurized chamber that sterilizes equipment, equipment, while, while others, others may simply be cleaned with soap and water or a small amount of bleach. If you, if you used any scalpels or needles, those will need, will need to be disposed of in a sharps container. This bright, this bright red box safely collects these sharps and will, and will prevent someone from being stuck with a used needle or a scalpel tip. Sharps, sharps should never be disposed of in a garbage can, because, because if someone reaches in there or grabs the bag to remove it from the bin, they could, they could be hurt, or, or even worse, infected, infected by the contaminated instrument. Preserved animals, animals need to be treated and disposed of in the same manner as the chemicals that preserve them. So, so if, if your dissection specimens are preserved in formaldehyde, you'll need, need to treat those animals as if they themselves are formaldehyde. They will, they will need, need to be properly bagged and, and labeled so that, so that they, they can, can be disposed of properly by a supervisory lab staff. staff. If, you're if you're working with pathogens or microbial organisms, especially infectious or possibly harmful ones, these should be properly destroyed and all lab equipment completely sterilized. 
This type of lab work can be extremely useful for science, but as you can imagine, it is also potentially very dangerous, if not controlled. We could go on for some time about different disposal techniques for the many different kinds of biological specimens. But your lab will be required to instruct you on how to properly dispose of your specimens and also have these instructions printed in an easily accessible place so that you can refer to them as needed. And of, and of course, course if, you if you ever have a question, question about how to safely work with or dispose of a specimen, your lab, your lab supervisor is the best person to help you with this. Take, take advantage of their knowledge. They are, they are there to assist you in having a safe and fun experience, experience in the lab. lab. Biological specimens can make lab work incredibly fun and interesting. We can, we can learn a lot about diseases, other animals, and even ourselves by studying tissues, fluids, and organisms in our lab work. Depending on the nature of your work, you may use preserved animals or live ones, human tissues, microbes, or even animal pellets or hair. Both the safe handling and disposal procedures you employ will depend entirely on the types of specimens you're working with. Some, some specimens require extensive bodily protection, protection while some require only the use of protective gloves. Some, some specimens need to be destroyed or sterilized before being disposed of. You should, you should be informed of all safety protocols before you begin working, but if, but if you, you ever have any questions, questions you can check, check the written copy of the rules in your lab or ask your lab supervisor. supervisor.